Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we're gonna take a quick look at the random module and how we can use this to get some random data. So I use this a lot to create dummy data that I use within my videos. So I figured I'd make a short video showing how you can use this to do something similar. So we'll be uh, taking a look at how to create random numbers and grabbing random values from a list of values and things like that. Now, one thing that I wanna mention before we get started is that this shouldn't be used for security purposes or cryptography. And Python mentions this in their documentation and suggests using the secrets module instead if that's what you're trying to do but for most cases the random module works great so if you just want to generate some random data or have a game where you need some random values or shuffle some values or something like that then this is perfect for those types of things so with that said let's go ahead and get started so first to use the random module we're going to need to import it and this is included in the standard library so you don't have to install any third-party packages so you can just say import random now the first two methods that are usually covered are the random and uniform methods. Now I hardly ever use these myself, but let's take a quick look at these just to see what they do. So we can use the random method to get a random value between zero and one. And the zero is gonna be inclusive and the one is gonna be non-inclusive. And what this means is that you can get an exact value of zero, but you can't get an exact value of one. You can only get you know, 0 0.999, but never all the way up to one. So if we say value is equal to random dot random, and then we print out this value. Now, if I run this a couple of times, then each time we should get a value between zero and one. Now, the reason I never really use this is because I usually want random values between a certain range, and we could multiply this random value to get values between a certain range, but the other methods already provide this functionality for us. So, for example, if we wanted a random floating point value between, let's say, 1 and 10, then we could use the uniform method to do this. So we can say uniform, and then the range of values, uh, and so if we run this, we should get a random floating point value between one and 10 every time we run this. Now, if you want random floating point values between a different range, then you can just change the arguments that you pass into that method. Now, I personally don't use this method too often either because usually when I need random values, I usually need whole numbers or integers. Now, to get random integers, we can use the randint method. So, for example, let's say that we wanted to simulate the role of a six-sided die. Now, to do this, we'll just want to use the randint method and we're gonna want a random number between one and six, and one and six should be inclusive. So this includes uh, both one and six in the random values that you get. So if we run this a few times, then we should see random values between one and six pop up. Uh, and so there we got one and six and a bunch of values in between. Now, if you just wanted to simulate like something like a coin toss, for example, then you could just do a random integer between, let's say zero and one, and you could just pretend that zero is heads or one is tails. So if you do that uh, and run this a few times, then each time you get a random value between zero and one. So that randint method is a method that I tend to use a lot. Now, another random method that I personally end up using a lot is the choice method. Now, the choice method picks a random value from a list of values. So for example, let's say that we had a list of greetings and that we wanna grab a random greeting. Um, so let me create a list of greetings here. And now let's say that we wanted to grab a random greeting. So I'll do that with random.choice, and I will pass in that greetings list there. And now whenever I print these out, I'll print out that random greeting uh, followed by my name. So now if I run this a few times, then we should see that it grabs a random greeting from that greetings list every time that we run this. Now it's also possible to get multiple random values from a list and to do that, instead of using choice, we'll use choices. So to do this, let's say that we wanted to simulate some roulette results and whether it lands on red, uh, black, or green. So to do this, let's create a list of colors here and we will create that list of colors that uh, the outcomes can be. So the outcomes can be red, black, or green. 
Now, I actually grabbed this example from the Python documentation because I thought they did a good job of showing what we can do with this. So now let's say that we wanted to simulate like 10 rounds of the roulette wheel spinning. So we could do this by saying, I'll just call this results, and we'll say random.choices to grab um, a list of random values here. And we want to choose random values from colors. And then we can set our K value. And our K value is just how many times we want to pick a random value. So let's do this 10 times to simulate uh, 10 wheel spins. And we'll pass in the results to print out. So let's save that and run it. And we can see that it returns a list of 10 random results since we passed in 10 for K. And we can see that uh, for each value in this list, it grabbed a random value from our colors list. Now, right now, every color is equally likely to be randomly selected. Um, so we can see here that it's that there are two greens in the results here. So the greens and the reds and the blacks are all just as likely to be randomly selected. But if you've ever seen a roulette wheel, there are actually 18 red pockets, 18 black pockets, and only two green pockets. So it's actually a lot less likely that a ball will land on green. So really what we want to do is weight these so that our random choices take these odds into consideration. And we can set these weights of our choices uh, by passing in an extra value here. So we can pass in another argument called weights. And this weights is going to be a list of what we want to weight these. So we want to weight the red as 18, the black as 18, and the green as 2. So here's how these weights work. So our total weights here add up to 38. So we have 18 plus 18, which is 36, and then 2, which is 38. So red has an 18 out of 38 chance of being randomly selected, and so does black but green only has a two out of 38 chance of being selected. So we have two green results here in our current results, but now if we run this, then we'll see that green is a lot less likely to be selected. So if we run this twice, we can see that we got one green value here, run through this a few more times, and green just very rarely pops up. So those weights seem to be working properly. Okay, so now let's take a look at how we can randomly shuffle a list of values. So let's say that we have a list of values from 1 to 52. Now we can think of these as a deck of cards since there are 52 cards in a deck. So first, let's create a range. So I will call this deck and set this equal to range of 1 and 53. And that's because the 53 is non-inclusive. So this will be a range between 1 and 52. Now, just so that we can print these out, I'm going to convert this range to a list and we can see what this looks like. So now let me print out this deck. So if I run that, you can see that we get a list of values between 1 and 52. So now let's use the random module to shuffle this list. So this shuffles the list in place. So we don't have to set another variable or anything like that. We can just say random dot shuffle and then pass in the list that we want to shuffle. So if we run this, then we can see that now our list of 52 numbers was randomly shuffled around. So now let's say that we wanted to get five random cards from this deck. Now you might think that we should use the choices method that we saw a little bit ago, but this wouldn't really work because with the choices method, it could randomly grab the same cards multiple times. So for example, it could randomly select the one card multiple times and we only want unique cards. So to do this, we're gonna use the sample method. Now it'll make sure that it only grabs unique cards from our sequence. So to do this, I'm just going to create another variable here, and I'll call this hand, and I'll set this equal to uh, random dot sample, and we want to get a sample from the deck, and we want five random unique values. So we'll pass in k as five, and now let's print out our hand. So let's run that. So now we should get a random sample of five cards from our 52 card deck. And if we run this a few more times, then we can see that we never get the same card twice because these, uh, the sample method will make sure that it's only unique values. Okay, so now that we've seen some random methods, uh, let me show you a practical use case for what we've learned. So for my videos, I usually need some sample data. So for example, with my CSV tutorial, I created a lot of fake names and email addresses and things like that. And I used the random module to do this. So let's, I have opened a sample file here where I'm creating a lot of fake names and phone numbers, addresses, and email addresses. 
Now, there are some more advanced packages online that create fake data for you, but I didn't really need anything too complicated, so I just went ahead and wrote my own. But we have a bunch of lists here at the top of our module that just has a lot of common first names and last names and street names and fake cities and states. Now, normally you'd want to break these into different lines to be PEP8 compliant, but this is just something for per personal use, and I don't like all the extra space that they take up on the extra lines, so I just keep these on one line here. So those are my lists that I'm going to be getting random values from. And then if we go down here just a bit, then here I'm just creating a loop for however much fake data that I want. So if I loop through this 100 times, then it will create 100 fake names and phone numbers and addresses and emails. So within the loop, you can see that we're grabbing the first a uh, random name from the first names. And then we're setting this last variable to a random dot choice from the last names. Now here for the phone number, it's a little bit more complicated. So we're using an F string. Now, if you don't know what an F string is, then you can watch my video on strings to learn more about that. But basically uh, within the F string here, our first value, we are getting a random three digit number between 100 and 999. And then we are doing a dash and then a 555 five, five, since I want this to be a fake number and then another dash and then a random four digit number between 1000 and 9999. And then for the rest of the values here, it's basically everything that we've seen before. So the street number is just a random integer between 100 and 999. The street is a random choice from our list of street names. The city is a random choice from our list of fake cities. The state is a random choice from our states. And the zip code is a random uh, five digit integer between 10,000 and 99999. And then for the address, we're just using another F string to combine all of those together. So we have the street number, the street, then just a street with a period and a comma, the city, state, and zip code. Now for the email address, we're not using any random values here. We're just using this first variable, which was a random first name from our list, uh, plus the lower last name, and then just tagging on this at bogus email.com to the end. And then lastly, this print statement, I can print this out in any format that I want to print these random values out. So I'm printing out the first and last name and then a new line and then the phone number and a new line, then the address and a new line and then the email and then a new line to separate all those out. So now if I scroll up here to the top and I run this, then we can see what these random values kind of look like. So we can see that just in, you know, about 30 lines of code here with the random module that we're able to generate a lot of fake names, a lot of fake phone numbers and addresses and emails. So this can be pretty useful if you need some dummy data to practice against or anything like that. Okay, so I think that's going to do it for this video. Now, I hope that now you have a pretty good idea for some different ways that you can use the random module. But if anyone has any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up. And also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon and there's a link to that page in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.